Today, we're gonna discuss some applications on matrices. But before we just do that, have you ever wondered about the applications of matrices in real life? Actually, matrices play a pivotal role in physics and computer science. We'll answer the question of why and how is it the case. Just to stick around till the end of the video. Now, let's get back to the applications on matrices, starting with matrix multiplication. Assume we have two matrices, A and B. Multiplying A by B has two meanings. Algebraically, it basically means row-column multiplication. However, it has a special geometric meaning. To understand that, consider this example. This transformation gets the i and j hat and outputs the vector minus 2 minus 4 and 4, 2. It turns out, however, we can reach the same result by applying two different transformations. First, we flip everything around the y-axis, and then we rotate the figure around the origin as shown. And here's the catch. We have the i and j hat and two transformations, or equivalently, two matrices A and B. What we did is that we applied B first to the vectors, so we get a flipped version of the vectors, after which we applied the rotation transformation to that version. So it seems that matrix multiplication symbolizes a composition of linear maps. This now raises a question. Does the order matter? We'll see that it does matter. That's because if we applied the matrix A first, we would have gotten this output. Now, applying the matrix B on that output would produce a totally different result from ours, isn't it? Now, regarding its applications, the usefulness of matrices appears in the ability to convert geometric data into numerical systems, especially in computer graphics, graphic designs, and engineering drawings. Another major area where a matrix multiplication appears to be important is in solving system of equations. But how does that relate to real life? Well, picture yourself playing tennis and throwing two balls successively. If you want to know when the two balls will reach the same height, for example, you would list the variables in a system of equation, like the air resistance, the speed, etc., and then you do the math. Yeah, you might not care about that, but at least physicists do. Here is how it works mathematically. We start by putting the coefficients of the system in this matrix form. Therefore, solving a system of equation requires knowing the input that a linear transformation should take to produce a certain output. Obviously, the vector x, y here is equal to the vector 1, 1. Interestingly, it can be verified geometrically. We can see that the vector that is transformed to the vector 3, 0 is clearly the vector 1, 1. That was an easy example. To solve systems with a big number of unknowns, a new definition comes to rescue. Solving the equation ax equals to b is done by multiplying the vector b by the inverse of the matrix a. Accordingly, the system has a solution when a is invertible. In other words, it has a solution when the inverse matrix b of the matrix a exists under this condition. Let's visualize an example now. This transformation is isomorphic to this matrix. It's clear here that the inverse needs to scale down the i and j hat, and of course, to flip the i hat. That is to say, by what shall we multiply the matrix we have to get an identity? And here it is. This concept appears to be a practical and efficient tool in solving systems of equations, as we can let a computer solve any solvable system, which makes our life easier, doesn't it? For more about matrices, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons.